Mr. President, honourable members, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for that welcome. It's a privilege to close this debate tonight. Uh, this is an opportunity that I've not had before, but how could I resist the chance to follow in the footsteps of some of the greatest minds who've addressed your society? Albert Einstein, Mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, and Kermit the Frog. <laughs> this has um, been a truly excellent debate in which we have considered and reflected upon what the poppy means to each of us. For me, it's a reminder of where I was on the 11th of November 2007, because I was surrounded by poppies. I was um, on patrol with my unit in the opium fields of Helmand province in Afghanistan. I remember how quiet it was when we paused at 11 o'clock to remember our fallen comrades. So tonight's debate takes us much further, far beyond the poppy fields of Flanders. But let me start by making something very clear. I don't come here tonight questioning anybody's right not to wear a poppy, because the battle that Harry's generation fought 70 years ago was precisely to defend those eternal values that we cherish today. The right to speak our minds, to make our own choices, free from fear of persecution. So wear a poppy, don't wear a poppy, that is your right. But if you're asking me tonight whether I think you should wear the red poppy, then my respectful answer is yes. Not in celebration, but in the spirit of commemoration. And for the reasons of respect, remembrance, and hope for the future. Let me say something about each of those things. First, respect for our veterans and for their families. We now live in a fast-moving world full of distractions, so there are few things more moving than when our country falls silent. And that's why every autumn we come together to remember the people who've laid down their lives for us, the veterans whose lives have been changed by conflict, and the families whose loved ones did not come home. When we buy a poppy and put our coins in the collection tin, that is not only about the vital support delivered by the Royal British Legion, it is a signal to those veterans and their families that we are thinking of them, that we feel what they're going through and that we stand with them in the spirit of respect, decency and solidarity. That is what brought the poppy appeal into being in the last century and we must not forget it in this one. The second point is about remembrance, because the red poppy is a timeless symbol that ensures we never forget our shared history. We are gathered here in this magnificent chamber, a chamber that has stood through two world wars and countless conflicts that have shaped generation after generation, none more so than the First World War, a war that gave birth to the concept of remembrance as we know it today. In 1914, there were 16,000 towns and villages across Britain, of which only 40, 40 thankful parishes would reach 1918 without losing someone to that conflict. So every community has its own story to tell, including my own. Because each week I walk into my constituency office through a square dedicated to the Barnsley Pals battalions. These were the men who responded to Lord Kitchener's famous recruiting poster in 1914. Men who joined up together, trained together, went to war together, and ultimately many of them died together. Last year, I travelled to northern France, where the Barnsley Pals had fought at the Battle of the Somme. I walked over the ground which they had fought, the open countryside that inspired the Canadian medic John McRae to write of Flanders fields where the poppies blow between the crosses row on row that mark our place and in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly. To stand over the graves of the Barnsley Pals was a sobering and incredibly moving experience because it felt like they were a long way from home and as we've heard tonight some believe that they died in a battle that though appalling was necessary and needed to be fought. Others argue that their sacrifice was futile in a war that achieved nothing and that could and should have been avoided. Many other conflicts that have claimed the lives of our servicemen and women have sparked similar differences of opinion. But whatever your opinion about any one of them, my argument is the same. 
no matter what we think of the political decisions that sent our soldiers into conflict, I believe that we have a duty to support our armed forces and bear witness to their sacrifice. Because the moment when the poppy becomes a symbol for one set of ideas over another is the moment that it loses its power. We wear it because it rises far above the disagreements that divide us and because it unites us in gratitude to those who have put themselves in harm's way in the service of our country. Now my past was shaped by my service in the British Army. Now I serve in the House of Commons and I have been there when we've considered matters of war and peace. And I can tell you that however history judges those decisions, they are better taken when our decision makers are made to feel the weight of history and remember the cost of peace and the consequences of war. And the poppy is a part of that, which brings me on to my third point, which is why I think the poppy is also about hope for the future. To those who say the poppy only stands for bloodshed, division and the glorification of war, let me offer you this reflection. It's a story from Northern Ireland, where I served 15 years ago. I saw the tensions that divided communities, tensions which linger today. For many, the red poppy, as we've heard tonight, was seen as a symbol of Britishness. But in 1997, a nationalist named Alban McGuinness became the Lord Mayor of Belfast. Alban went to his city's service for those who fell on the front line and laid a wreath at the memorial, and he did so wearing a red poppy. He was not wearing a symbol of his tradition, but he felt he could extend the hand of friendship to the Unionist people of Belfast by wearing a symbol of their tradition. It was a powerful moment of unity in Northern Ireland's divided politics, and it shows why we shouldn't ignore the role that the poppy has played in making peace. If an Irish nationalist can wear a red poppy as an act of reconciliation and respect for a different tradition, then perhaps collectively tonight, we can see how the poppy holds the potential to bring us closer together. And that is how we will build a more just and peaceful future. So let me conclude with this thought. It's a story of a young man named Henry Mosley. Henry was a gifted physicist who studied at this university more than 100 years ago. He contributed to some of the most significant scientific breakthroughs of his time. But when the war broke out, Mosley decided to enlist in the Royal Engineers. And a hundred years ago this year, he was killed on the beaches of Gallipoli. Some have said that he could have gone on to win the Nobel Prize. And it makes me wonder how many more people we have lost like Henry, who never had the chance to fulfill their potential. So tonight, on the 5th of November, let us remember those who came before like Henry, and let us wear the poppy in remembrance of them, in respect for the fallen, in solidarity with their loved ones, in support for those who serve us still, and in an enduring hope for a more just and peaceful future. That is the case that we on this opposition side present to you tonight, and I very much hope that you will support it. Thank you.